Ladies and gentlemen, I have to reveal my watch secrets. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I am a watch addict. Now, addicts of various stripes have a double life, which means they have secrets. So today, I must reveal my personal watch secrets. These have never been revealed. Now, uh, my first secret is that I may be more of an Umura guy than a captured Willard guy. What does that mean? Well, ladies and gentlemen, here in the camera you have the Seiko Captain Willard. A uh, very fine watch. I bought this used from a reputable seller. It did not come on a bracelet. It came on a uh, an old, it appears to be, it doesn't have a logo on it, but it appears to be an old gen uh, Uncle Tropic. Now it's currently on a new gen Uncle Tropic. Oh, don't do that. You're going to lose the focus, McMahon. You're going to ruin it. Don't even touch it. So, uh, there you go. So, there you have it. The Captain Willard is a very uh, nice watch, but I, I, I have to tell you something. There are signs that it's overrated. <clears throat> For me, and I didn't want to say this because this is beloved in the community, but this is a, this is a, uh, a video about secrets. It's about uh, revealing secrets. First of all, the loom is, is Seiko good, but not Seiko great. When you have a, a Captain Willard diver, you want it to be great loom. And I'm sorry, but the loom disappoints. I, you know, when Seiko makes good loom, it has daytime drama. That's right. Daytime drama means you can even see the contrast of the loom in the, in the daytime. And that's one of the things. Now, uh, a, an even more telling sign that I'm disappointed, every time you touch it, it goes out. Let's, here, let's try it from a little distance. There you go. So the loom is not the only problem. I've noticed that I'm having trouble finding a strap that I like. Now, I'm not a bracelet guy, and I've had this on the bracelet before. It's okay on bracelets. But no matter what strap I put it on, um, I'm not happy. That's not a good sign. Ladies and gentlemen, when you keep strap swapping on a watch, that's a sign that you're having problems in your head with a watch. You're chasing your tail. I may, I may not be a Willard guy, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what does the Captain Willard remind me of with this funky styling? I worked at a wine store in the uh, 80s, and there were a lot of uh, university professors coming in, and, and they all drove a particular car that you can't buy in America anymore. This car was strange. I don't know how to explain it. It looked like a, a cigar aspiring to be a science fiction cartoon car. It was called the Citroën, a French car called the Citroën. C-I-T-R-O-E-N. Now, these, these cars, they look cartoonish. They look like they went out of their way to not look like other cars. And I think that Captain Willard has that quality. And, and I want a watch like that in my collection. I, wanna, I want a French Citroen version of a watch in my collection. Just one. Just one. And the, the Willard seems to be an attempt to be that kind of funky uh, styling, unapologetic, like the, the Citroen. But the execution is such that I just don't like it as much as the Amura. The Amura just seems to be a better execution of it. You can buy a, a Amura used and, and end up spending, you know, 1500 or, or so on a used one. Or do you want to spend close to 1000 on a Willard? I'd rather you spend 1500 on an Amura. The Amura, unlike... The Willard has far better loom, and it looks good on any uh, strap that I put on it. It's currently on a dive core, and uh, but it looks good on any strap. It looks good on Tropics, Isoframes. I don't know. I think I might be an Amura guy, man. I think I had to uh, to reveal uh, the secret. Uh, that's secret number one. Oh man, this is painful. Secret number two. All right, 
I don't really like doing watch reviews. I think it's disgusting. I don't think I'm hardwired to be a watch impresario. I'm more of an essay writer, and in my vain imagination, I'm the Montaigne of the Orology universe. Though, you know, the French essayist Montaigne, he may be too elevated for a working class guy like me. You know, my father was a country boy growing up in the in the swamps of Florida. Maybe I should not be referring to Montaigne. Maybe I should stick to more of an American personality. Yeah, so I feel a deep spiritual connection to Don Rickles. Same goes for Rodney Dangerfield, the great Richard Lewis. And so uh, I'd, I'd rather uh, be more of an essay video guy on YouTube and filter my watch obsession through my essays. God, this is a, see, I, oh, man, this Amur is beautiful. What an execution, perfect execution of, of, a, of a turtle style uh, watch. I wish they would have done something like this with the uh, Captain Willard, which has different proportions. So. I don't know, man. I really don't want to do reviews. I mean, there's a lot of you guys out there doing really good watch reviews. I mean, who am I to compete with you? You guys are doing a good job. That's your that's your space. Isn't there a cliche? Stay in your lane. I don't know if it's my lane to be uh, to be doing watch reviews. I, I don't know. I guess I could do it if I had a local watch dealer. And I think Average Brothers has a guy in, in the San Diego area uh, bringing him a nice feed of watches. And he can do, and you know, you got a guy bringing watches to your house, maybe he drops by, you, got, you guys talk, and then he picks them up. You don't have to deal with mail and uh, watches getting hurt in the mail. I guess I could do it, but even then I have doubts. Uh, because what would happen to my brain if I just had all these watches coming in all day and all night? Look at uh, the Random Rob channel and uh, Average Brothers. They, they've got all these watches coming in. You know, it, it would have a deleterious effect on my watch collecting. I'll tell you why. Many years ago, I had a conversation with a BMW salesman, and he told me the job ruined his love for cars. I mean, he was driving all these BMWs and other expensive cars all day you know, delivering them to customers and everything. He said, eh, you just get jaded after a while. And um, I'm afraid that's what would happen if I did uh, watch reviews. I'll see. see, I'm not jaded when I look at the Samura. What an execution. All right, secret number three. Do you mind if I have a sip of coffee here? It's early in the morning. My family's asleep. Ah, mm. oh, Lord have mercy having coffee in the morning. All right, secret number three. This, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Well, first of all, I'm going to do secret number three. <clears throat> I better show you an appropriate marker for this one. Okay, this is a fourth gen monster, save the ocean. All right, let me tell you secret number three. I do not own the greatest watches Seiko has made over the last decade. But, but <laughs> let me tell you, I did own them. This is one of the most painful secrets I have to share with you. I do not own, I do not own the greatest watches Seiko made over the last decade. And when I say the greatest, let's, let's put a caveat on that. The greatest sub $1,000 watches they made. I do have... Uh, some of their SLA models that, that cost considerably more that, that I'll put up there, but let's, let's, let's revise a statement. I don't own the greatest sub $1,000 Seikos that they've made over the last 10 years, and, and there was a time when I owned all of them. It's disgusting, and it, I don't even, it just, I feel stupid. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a fourth gen Save the Ocean little penguin foot monster that I recently got. This is like the third time I've owned this. <clears throat> and uh, this has some good qualities to it that are that remind me of the third gen monster, which is which is one of the one of the greatest Seikos they've made in the last not only ten years but twenty years. And I own four of those third gens. Jade green, navy blue, coral blue, and orange. And they now go for like twelve hundred bucks. Good luck with that. <laughs> Get brand new, they're like twelve hundred bucks. You can get <clears throat> the navy blue one used for maybe six. 
<clears throat> maybe 700 bucks. I don't know. But this fourth gen is pretty good. And the reason why I know this is a good watch, it has good loom. And it looks good on any strap. I put this on Tropics, Isoframes. It's currently on a uh, <clears throat> an OEM, an OEM waffle. And it looks good at anything I throw at it. Anything I throw at it looks good. So this is a good sign. But it but it's not the third gen monster. It's not the third gen. And there are some other watches that I used to own that were sub <clears throat> 1000 that I gotta tell you about. The first gen MM200 with a good loom. Okay, let me say this slowly. SBDC 061 black dial. And the, uh, <clears throat> by the way, I've had these watches multiple times. I don't even know how many times I've had them. The SPDC 065 Scion Blue. I've had that watch like half a dozen times. It's ridiculous. So, if you're, if you didn't have any watches and you came to me, I want a few Seikos, I'd say. See if you can find an 061, an 065. See if you can find a third gen monster. Probably you're going to have to find it in navy blue because the other ones are going to be double the price. And uh, there's even another one that I used to have many times. The SBDC 051 uh, is, a, is an amazing uh, watch as well. It also has great loom. So these are the greatest watches Seiko's made, sub $1,000 in the last 10 years. I do not own them. That, that's disgusting. Now, let's get to a, a related secret, secret number four. I owned the Navy Blue third gen monster close to 10 times. And I still want it. I, I doubt I'm gonna get it back. I'm not going to spend 700 bucks on one. I'm not doing it. <clears throat> but that that's a terrible, that's a terrible, uh, terrible secret. Didn't want to share it. Oh, secret number five. Now that I know what the, uh, the greatest Seikos have been in the last 10 years, and knowing that I don't own them, I have this neurosis, this fear, this paranoid dread that any watch I get now is just trying to fill the hole from those lost watches, some of the, those lost watch great great watches. And because of that, I'm wondering if I should sell my, my, my Captain Willard and get a, uh, a first gen MM200 or a third gen Monster. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. I'm looking at the uh, Willard right now next to the Amura. I know in the camera you have the uh, fourth gen Monster, but I'm looking at them next to each other. And I don't know. I don't know. Ah, oh, the torment of a watch obsessive. All right, secret number six. So I have an Instagram account, and um, what I like about the Instagram account is that uh, it encourages me to to find good angles and and capture good good images of my watches. But I have to give you a confession, a secret revealed. I worry, I worry that posting an Instagram photo has become a neurosis. Kind of like a person who takes a cigarette break all the time. Like they just can't engage with their, with their day, they need a little cigarette break. And I worry. You know, you start uh, getting addicted to posting stuff uh, on Instagram. What if your life became one big cigarette break and you never went back to the office? That's kind of how I feel about uh, Instagram. And then that leads to another fear that I really don't want to share, but this video is called Secrets Revealed. So I got to tell you this, what, what if uh, posting uh, YouTube videos is the same neurotic impulse? Huh? Then what? Am I doomed? 
And uh, this brings me to secret number uh, seven. Yes, secret number seven. Um, I think I got eight secrets for you today. Yes, eight. So we're on seven now. Oh my God. I fear, this is secret number seven, I'm a bad influence on the watch community. Here's what I mean. You guys are in the hobby of finding watch happiness. Yet my hobby makes me eh, kind of miserable. You guys shouldn't be following my doomed watch collecting strategies. Following my ways is doomed to make you miserable like me. It's immoral. It is immoral of me to spread my misery to my fellow citizens in the watch community. Therefore, I should leave. I should delete the channel, get on an iceberg, and float toward the horizon while listening to Frank Sinatra sing Strangers in the Night. But here's another secret contained within the secret. If I go off into exile on that iceberg with Frank Sinatra singing Strangers in the Night, I'm not sure which watch should I wear. I don't know. Should I wear the Amura? Oh, the Amura. By the way, to stop this reverie for this Amura on the dive core, this could be my daily diver right here. I think this situation right here is what made me get uh, go cold on the Captain Willard. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable comfort right here. So, the fact that I can't decide, this is insane. A guy is about to, 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 you know, lodge himself into the horizon in the Antarctic on an iceberg, but he doesn't do it at the last second because he doesn't, he can't decide if he should wear his Amura or his SLA 055. But in any event, you know, I've become the eternal wanderer of the watch hobby seeking in vain to manage my watch addiction and I don't know what's going to become of me and this brings me to my last secret oh boy I fear I have become the Dr. Smith of the watch collection uh, hobby who in the heck is Dr. Smith a lot of you guys are too young uh, and I'm gonna have to read from uh, <laughs> Lost in Space Wiki to describe to you who Dr. Smith is and, and, and then explain to you the, metaphor, uh, the metaphorical import, the metaphorical meaning to uh, how I become uh, Dr. Smith. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to read this to you. Then I'm going to give you the significance of this. So, uh, yes, I become Dr. Smith. Uh, let me just read this and then I'll explain why I become Dr. Smith and why I should probably delete this channel. Okay, Dr. Smith has a PhD and he is a uh, he has an intergalactic doctor of environmental psychology that's who he is he was a United States Space Corps staff psychologist and environment expert prior to the unexpected departure from Earth he was also an agent for an enemy foreign government now by the way this show was made in the 60s during the Cold War <laughs> so Prior to the launch of the Jupiter 2 from Earth, Dr. Smith reprogrammed the robot to destroy the ship eight hours after departure. While making last minute adjustments to ensure the successful sabotage, Dr. Smith subdued a guard on duty aboard the spacecraft, possibly killing him. He was later trapped aboard the Jupiter 2 while attempting to reactivate the robot which had been shut down by a technician. The crew were protected from the effects. The crew were protected from the effects of the liftoff in their state of suspended animation. But Dr. Smith was forced to endure it, fully conscious. The ship is thrown off course by Dr. Smith's additional weight and becomes hopelessly lost. Oh my God, the metaphor is killing me. It was later revealed in this series that this course deviation prevented the destruction of the Jupiter 2 in a violent meteor shower soon after a liftoff. Uh, so I'm Dr. Smith. I'm, I'm not even a legit watch hobbyist. I don't do real reviews. I think I've sabotaged your collection. 
you guys are legit crew members of the Jupiter 2. And I'm an imposter. Is this ridiculous? Is this a ridiculous paranoid thought? Maybe. But what's this video called? It's called Secrets Revealed. I'm, I'm telling you my doubts in, in the community. Maybe Dr. Smith needs to get kicked off the Jupiter too. I don't know. I bet you you guys suffer from imposter syndrome as well. You feel like you're, um, you're uh, sabotaging. So, I don't know. The takeaway of this is that the Amura is a beautiful watch. I should be grateful. What I love about this watch is I as I try to end this on a on a gratitude note. Oh, he's doing careful, mindful habits of gratitude. Oh, Pat McMahon on the back. What I love about this watch, not only does it have SLA Grand Seiko uh, refinement and quality in great loom, it kind of has the vibe of the MM200 uh, SBDC061. So I'm getting uh, the world of the past that I may not be able to recover by buying, rebuying that 061. I can just enjoy it in the Samura. Yes. Ooh, a morsel of sanity before we sign off on today's video. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to now ask you guys something that's rather audacious of me. In the comments section, do you have any watch secrets that you would like to reveal? I'll tell you what. If I get enough good watch secrets in the comments section, we will have a uh, we will have a, a follow up <laughs> video on the entire community's watch secrets. Man, it's gonna sink the Jupiter too, man. We're gonna go off course. It's gonna be pure madness. Oh yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, I'm out.